In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Alpha and Omega, the God who was, is, and is to come. Amen. A new commandment, but an old love. Jesus' instruction to his disciples, if we had no other message from the Bible, could form our only foundation necessary for being a Christian. This is Jesus in a nutshell. This is his teaching, but also his life. And this instruction that this new commandment is in a sense something fresh must have come as a little bit of a shock to those who had devoted themselves as many others of the Old Testament faith in loving one another. The difference about this new commandment is that we are instructed to love one another as Jesus has loved us. As God loves us, we are instructed to love one another. Now, this has an echo, but a fulfillment of the commandment that was known to the Old Testament people, the Jewish faith, that one should love others as one loves oneself. And that that is a command from God. This is going that step further. It's not just as we understand love in a human way, but now we are instructed to love as God loves. Well, it's probably important for us to recognize how God loves. How we have experienced the love of God, perhaps already. How we are learning again in our lives how to receive that love how we are yearning for that love, seeking it, walking towards it always on our pilgrimage through life. Well, there's a few things for us to notice about the way that God loves and specifically the way that Jesus loved during his humanly ministry, as well as the ministry that he still extends through us. Probably the number one thing that we can recognize about God's love is that it is inclusive. It is an inclusive love. In our first lesson today from the book of Acts, we encounter Peter as he is beginning to really understand what it means to follow Jesus after the resurrection, what it means for all of God's people to follow Jesus after his resurrection. And there was a tension in the early church between those who had been Jews that became Jewish believers or Jewish Christians, described in this text as the circumcised believers, and those who were new to the Abrahamic faith, those who had been Gentiles, those of a different race, nation, or perhaps even previous belief. And so how do these two types of Christian, I suppose, figure out on life together. There was a lot of tension. And Peter's vision that he has in this instance of making all that had previously been counted as unclean, not just dietary requirements, but also wider in population and people and the way that people associated with one another, making all that had previously been unclean, clean. And there is a command in that, that what God has made clean, you shall not call profane or unclean. It's very clear that if God is opening up love to all people, then that means that those who follow God's love and are instructed to live it out must also be open to all people. There's now a beautiful conversion story that happens directly after Peter shares this vision. It's a conversion of an entire household of Gentiles, including family members, but also those who worked in the household, slaves and servants. Everybody was saved by the word of God in this instance. And one of the things that Peter really vocalizes when the rest of the community are going, hang on, what's going on here? They they eat unclean foods. I haven't seen them observe any of the rituals or traditions that we hold dear and that surely are still important because God gave us those as well as giving us Jesus. Peter says, who was I that I could hinder God? This is a beautiful challenge for us because it is not easy to love people who are different from us sometimes. It's also not easy to recognize that God accepts all people the way that they are, not as we would wish them to be. 
And so perhaps whenever we are challenged to love someone, if we feel like they're making it hard for us to love them, or if we just don't really get them, we're not on the same page, we hold different ideas as special, and we just live differently. Then maybe we can hear what Peter has said to this community, but also to us. Who was I that I could hinder God? God has chosen to open up love to all people and then instructed us to love one another as God loves. Then the challenge is for us to do just that and to work on the way that we inclusively love one another. So that's for the folk who we find it easy to love. Definitely, we should continue loving those. It's also for the folk that we find it more challenging to love. So whether someone is from a different group than us, whether someone is making choices that we don't agree with, we're called to love them. Gosh, that's hard work. But we are reassured that it is not out of our own generation of love that we're able to do this. And when I say generation, I don't mean as in like, um, you know, lineage. I mean, generation as like a power generation. You know, you plug into something and run power through something the generator of that is somewhere else. And for us, that's true too. God is the source of the love. We just need to plug in and run that love through us. So it's the channeling of that love that we are called to do. Jesus in the commandment, the new commandment, is also alluding to what we experience in our second lesson today from the book of Revelations revelations what a wild ride that book is if ever you're feeling bored with scripture just go and spend a little bit of time reading revelations if that doesn't pique your interest again then you probably need to open your eyes and have another read because there's all these wonderful visions again similar to what peter experienced visions that the author is speaking of and the vision that we are privy to today is one of the new creation This is the one that is alluding to when all things are made new, and that's in the physicality of existence. But also we can celebrate the way that God has already made things new in this new commandment of opening up faith and love and practice and following Jesus for everybody. And there's a little verse in that part of Revelation, which really spoke to me when I was reflecting on it. And it might help us to think also of what we are working towards, which, of course, we're keeping our eyes set on Jesus, on that eternity that we are promised with him, and trying to share that with others in a way that is loving for them as well. And this is the promise that we have once we get to see how eternity looks, whether that be instantaneously as soon as we finish our earthly life, or waiting for the eschaton, that time when the whole earth will be recreated. That's still a mystery. But what has been revealed to the author of Revelation and now to us is that God will dwell with them. They will be his peoples and God himself will be with them. This is that beautiful Emmanuel, God is with us, the way that Jesus had dwelt among the folk that he was ministering and teaching This is also the way that we are promised to be with all people, even those we don't like or don't agree with in the age to come, in eternity. Now, it's certainly my hope that love will be a whole lot easier then. We won't be working with our earthly limitations anymore, and we will be far more enabled as heavenly bodies to love one another. So that's a hope to hold on to in any moment where we're going, oh, I really need to love you because that's what I'm instructed to do. But gee, it's hard because you're just so different from me. It's okay. One day we won't all be noticing those differences. One day we all will be in full communion together. And until then, it is our role to try and try again to emulate that for the here and now. So it's a challenge for each of us, perhaps today, perhaps in the days to come, to really reflect on how we experience God's love. How do we plug in so that that love can be channeled through us? And what are those human limitations within each of us that we might need to actively work on to extend God's love to all people? Because we're all in this together. (laughs) 
So we're going to get it wrong. We're, we're going to need to try again. We are enabled in that by God's grace and forgiveness, but we're also enabled in that by Jesus' new commandment, that we love one another as Jesus loves us. And although our love generation might be imperfect in creating it out of ourselves, we don't have to do that. We just have to plug into God and make sure that we're all loved up so that it just leaks out of us to everybody around us. Amen.